How's it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT here today to talk about glucose transport in epithelial cells. Now, the nomenclature epithelial is kind of interesting in itself. So a lot of students, and through no fault of their own, uh, just because it hasn't been explained to them, don't know what the difference between an endothelial cell and an epithelial cell is. Do you happen to know what it is? If you do, you'll know that an epithelial cell separates kind of an outside environment from an inside environment. You may be thinking to yourself, well, how can the intestinal cell be an epithelial cell? After all, the intestines seem pretty well within the human body. And that's right. But something called the alimentary canal, or basically any part of our digestive system that is with inside our tubules, so whether that's our mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, uh, rectum, or even anus, that's going to be um, you know, part of the outside of our body. So our epithelial cells are actually protecting us from the food that is kind of part of the outside environment. So that's why intestinal cells are called epithelial cells, and cells that line blood vessels, for example, are called endothelial cells because they are cells that are lining uh, compartments, in this case the lumen of a blood vessel, uh, from another internal environment, in this case maybe a tissue or uh, some interstitial fluid. But I digress. We're looking at epithelial cells and specifically focusing on the glucose transport. So let's start with some key takeaways. Number one, on the basal side of our cell, so this is the basal side, or the bottom side, we have this sodium-potassium transporter. Now you may have seen this in your intro bio, even AP bio classes, but it doesn't stop being important. And it's very high yield to know that three sodium molecules are pumped out of the cell and two potassium molecules are pumped in. The yellow is a little bit hard to see, but I thought potassium in bananas um, might make it make sense that potassium be uh, yellow in this picture. So we've crossed off key takeaway number two. It's very high yield that we have three sodium coming out and two sodium coming in. What isn't shown here is we have an ATP being hydrolyzed to ADP for every cycle of this. So for every ATP, we get three sodium out and two potassium in. And this is called primary active transport. Now, on the apical side of our epithelial cell, we have secondary active transport in this sodium glucose transporter. And we call these sodium glucose transporters SGLT. So S for sodium, GL for glucose, and T for transport. Specifically in the small intestine, the most common type is SGLT1. SGLT1 is also found in the proximal tubule of the kidney, along with another type of SGLT, which is SGLT2. So a little bit of renal physiology for you there as well. The SGLTs, um, their main significance is that they are sodium glucose symporters, meaning they import both Na plus and glucose into the cell. Symport just means that the uh, molecules of interest are moving the same way. An antiport would be where maybe sodium was moving in and glucose was moving out of the cell. So now that we've covered that, let's talk a little bit about why this is referred to as secondary active transport. Well, sodium uh, has a kind of a gradient that is being utilized here. So we have a high concentration of Na outside of the cell and a pretty low concentration inside. And this is also facilitated by this NaK uh, ATPase that is pumping these three Na plus molecules out. So that is creating this gradient which the SGLT can use to pump Na plus in and along with it glucose against its gradient because there's going to be more glucose out here than outside of the cell. And that's not very favorable. So to pump it against its gradient, we need to go 
with our gradient to fuel that transport in. And the reason it's called secondary active transport is because it is taking advantage of the gradient that the primary active transporter, in this case our sodium potassium pump, has made in order to fuel an unfavorable reaction. And this quote unquote reaction is driving glucose against its gradient to a place of higher concentration within this epithelial cell. So that's a very high yield concept. And then the third is a little bit related to renal physiology, which we are briefly going over. So the uptake of nutrients, which mostly is going to occur in our small intestine, keeping in mind our digestive system physiology, is simply called absorption. And that makes sense. And we're absorbing into our blood. And that's why we call the uptake of nutrients from our kidney tubules. So think distal tubule, uh, proximal tubule, and uh, mostly the collecting duct um, we're looking at in the MCAT. We call that um, uptake of nutrients from the kidney tubules reabsorption, since those nutrients um, were originally absorbed in the small intestine. So a little bit of crossover into renal physiology. Then finally, to wrap this up, um, so we're looking at the lumen of our small intestine going into the cytosol of our epithelial cell. Now glucose, since it has a high concentration within the cell and a relatively lower concentration in the lumen of our capillary, glucose can freely flow through um, uh, via facilitated diffusion through another glucose transporter. And so it just flows into the lumen of the capillary and now it's free to go be used in a variety of different processes. So it could be stored as glycogen in the liver, it could be used maybe by a red blood cell right away, we don't know, but the good news is we do have that glucose available for our body to use. So really there are three steps here. One, our primary active transport, we have to have the sodium potassium transport set up a sodium gradient. Two, our SGLT utilizes that sodium gradient to uh, pump glucose against its gradient into the epithelial cell. And three, we have glucose flow down its concentration gradient. So this, um, you know, combines a couple different concepts in biology, and it's often not explicitly covered, but it definitely is in the same sense, um, a very integrative way to think about a lot of these separate processes, whether that's primary active transport or digestive system physiology or renal physiology. And that really reflects how the MCAT likes to ask questions. So, speaking of questions, let's jump right into our question that we have below that's kind of been lurking uh, through this video. So a pathologist is examining a biopsy. So basically, uh, you know, a doctor goes in and cuts out a little piece of the small intestine from the duodenum, which is the first part of our small intestine. Uh, if you don't know the three parts, definitely go back and look at those. From the duodenum um, of a patient, so I missed of a, I gotta write that in there, of a patient with an unidentified gastrointestinal disorder resulting in reduced glucose levels. She notes that the brush border cells contain a large number of Na plus ungated channels, normally found in neurons, on both the apical and basal sides of the cell. What is a plausible explanation for the reduced glucose levels? So I'll give you guys a minute to think about that one. So hopefully you picked answer B here. Now let's talk about why B is right. So the most immediate effect of increased permeability on sodium is that sodium gradient is going to be dissipated. And remember, this is what we were using the entire time to run our SGLT. So if our sodium ungated channels are increased, some of the sodium is going to flow back in after it's pumped out. And so this gradient is going to be reduced and the glucose flow is not going to be very favorable as this, um, the energy needed to pump it in is supplied from Na plus coming into the cell. And that Na plus coming into the cell is no longer very favorable now that we've had that gradient dissipated.
So again, in our process, step one, the act of transport, is messed up affecting step two. And that's exactly what B says. So we have a reduced gradient to use to transport glucose into the cell on our apical side. And I think it's also useful to go over why the other answers are wrong. So A, increased permeability to Na plus is causing too much glucose to be absorbed into blood. So right away, we know that one's an opposite. If we had too much glucose in blood, even if it was being excreted in the urine, which does happen if glucose levels are extremely high, uh, you don't need to know the exact level, but it's about uh, 300 milligrams per deciliter, uh, you will actually urinate uh, partially glucose because your kidneys can't handle that much glucose. Uh, but that would uh, also only happen if we had a really high blood sugar level. So this is actually an opposite, and we can cross out A. That being said, let's look at C. The basal glute channel is rendered non-functional since it is a glucose sodium antiport. That is false, so we're looking at this glute channel here, this brown one. And this is merely um, you know, passive transport, facilitated diffusion. We're not using any energy here. And we're also not transporting sodium at all, let alone it being a glucose sodium antiport. So we can cross out C. And then D, the cell is constantly depolarized, resulting in hyperactive exocytosis of glucose back into the intestinal lumen. Uh, that is not true. So these brush border epithelial cells generally aren't going to be too affected by depolarization as a general rule. Um, and that's not the point of why we are creating uh, this Na plus gradient. That is definitely the case in neurons. We want an Na plus gradient that is greater outside of the cell than inside of the cell to be able to um, to be able to uh, create an action potential through depolarization. But in the epithelial cell, that's not really the case. So our correct answer is B. All right, and that is it for this lesson. So definitely take note of epithelial cells and specifically glucose transport. I think if you're gonna take any way from this lesson, it's the difference between primary and secondary active transport. All right, stay tuned for more videos and I will see you guys later.